welcome to today's ABC Adventures. As you can see, I brought some of my friends along with me to help explain our letter. So, let's start over here. Let's ask our little bunny rabbit. He says this is an igloo. An igloo. It's a house made out of ice and snow. Igloo. Our little froggy here. Let's ask him, what do you have? Hmm, I don't know if he gets, but you get itchy. What do we do? We scratch when we're itchy. Itchy, itchy. Let's see, oh, Mr. Skunk. Mr. Skunk, what do you have? He has, he says, these are ice skates. Ice skates. Eight. Oh, I see one more. Here's our Mr. Hedgehog. Can you see him? There he is, our little hedgehog. And let's see. What does yours say? Yeah. His says intersection. Intersection. That's where one road crosses over another road. It's an intersection. So, do we figure out? Do we figure out the letter? It's the letter I. I. So all of these words started with the letter I. And another word that starts with the letter I, insect or insects. The letter I-N-S-E-C-T-S, -S -E insects. So we have a song today about our insects and it goes like this. Ladybugs and butterflies buzzing bees up in the sky lay teeny tiny little ants crawling up and down my pants many insects can be found in the sky and on the ground so the next time you're outside look at the flowers look at the ground look in the dirt when you're planting, let's see what kind of insects you see. So, all right, now our next song, it's like a little game. I know you all know the song, if you're happy and you know it, but today we're going to sing it in a different way. We're going to start though, I have little body parts we borrow from Mr. Potato Head. So here's what we're going to do. These are Mr. Potato Bug hands, right? So, we're going to sing. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. All right, so that verse you knew. What if I were to pull out of here? This is his tongue. His tongue. So, if you're happy and you know it, stick out your tongue. If you're happy and you know it, stick out your tongue. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show. If you're happy and you know it, stick out your tongue. Did you stick out your tongue? That's fun to do. All right, now, what else do we have? We have his eyes. If you're happy and you know it, blink your eyes. If you're happy and you know it blink your eyes if you're happy and you know it then your face will surely show it if you're happy and you know it blink your eyes did you blink did you blink and let's see what else do i have in here i have let's see let's see his nose his nose. So we are going to touch our nose. If you're happy and you know it, touch your nose. If you're happy and you know it, touch your nose. 
If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know, touch your nose. Good job. And one more thing. These are his feet. So we know how to do that, right? We're gonna stomp. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. All right, I hope you have fun doing that because now I have one more thing before we read our book. And it's, we all like ice cream. Ice cream also starts with the letter I. So we have ice cream, ice cream in a bowl, ice cream, ice cream, nice and cold, ice cream, ice cream, what a treat, ice cream, ice cream, it's good to eat, it is, so let's move on, and today our book is called Two Problems for Sophia, and Sophia is an inventor. Inventor also starts with the letter I. And Jim Averbeck wrote the book and Yasmin Ishmael drew the pictures. So let's find out. Let's look at the back of it. There she is thinking, thinking, what can I create? What can I draw? But let's find out what her two problems are. Sophia felt happy, sad, happy to have Noodle, her one-time desire, yet sad that her new pet came with giraffe-sized problems. Hmm. Let's find out what she means by that. Feel like I'm missing a page, but we didn't. All right. He was especially fond of grandmama. The feeling was not mutual. I can't bear a sloppy kiss, said grandmama. And besides, he snores. There he is. He goes, slurp. And what does grandma? She goes, Ugh. oh, she hates those kisses. Snoring was the second problem. He's going, Zroom. When Noodle slept, no one else could. I don't know if you've ever been around anybody who snores. It's not pleasant. It's rather loud. So, Mother rendered her verdict at breakfast. Noodle is guilty of robbing this family, she said, of sleep. I hereby order you to find a durable solution to his problem. Perdurable, asked Sophia. What does that mean? Did you ever hear of that word, perdurable? I don't even know what that means. Mother said it means permanent, forever. So we have to find a problem that's going to solve it and keep it solved. Noodle tried to wake up with Grandmama. His eyelashes fuzzled, his nose muzzled, and then slurp. Grandma says, Ick. Like sending him back, muttered Grandmama. That's her solution to the problem. Now time for kisses, Sophia told Noodle. We have snoring solution to design. Noodle twitched his ossicones. You're right, said Sophia. Step one is research. Let's consult an expert. So she's on her computer. Let's see what she finds out. So here he is. It's like a tuba being played by a jet engine, Sophia told Miss Canticle, an acoustical engineer. Noodle's neck to lung capacity ratio creates a giant echo chamber. Miss Canticle replied, if he had a shorter neck, 
he wouldn't snore so loudly. So between here and here is so long that it makes the snoring sound louder than maybe it should. And maybe if it were shaped differently, well, how do we shape the giraffe differently? How do we make his neck shorter? That night, Noodle hooked, crooked, and pretzeled his neck, but the problem persisted. So here he is, look what he did to his neck. But he's still, he's still snoring. <laughs> Father complained bitterly as he guzzled his coffee. Noodle's benefit to this family is far outweighed by his cost, which are fixed and perpetual. Perpetual? Asked Sophia, what's that mean? And what did Dad say? Permanent. Forever. Send him back, said Grandmama. She doesn't want him around at all. Noodle sadly sidled up to Grandmama. Fuzzle, muzzle, slurp. And she says again, yuck, yuck. He's trying to make Grandmama like him. We need a better solution, Sophia told Miss Canticle. Well, if you can't silence a sound, replies Miss Canticle, you can block it or transform it. Block it? Sophia and Noodle conferred. We'll build some prototypes, she said. So there she is doing all of her calculating and figuring out how is she going to help Noodle. That night, she handed father some cotton wadding, mother earmuffs, uncle Conrad earplugs, and grandmama's a set of high decibel, low wavelength wireless sound dampening headphones she assembled from spare parts. Unfortunately, only Noodle slept. He still It didn't help them. Not at all. We had a family vote, groaned Uncle Conrad at breakfast. My constituents demand an abiding solution. Abide, oh, I know permanent, said Sophia. Send them back, Grandmama yawned. Noodle eyed Grandmama. His eyelashes fluzzled, his nose. You better muzzle that muzzle, Mr. Grandmama Warren. <laughs> Poor Noodle, his ossicones wilted. Chin up, said Sophia. We just need to try a fresh approach. She went back to her room to design. Oh, look at this invention. Six hours later, she taped a detailed blue pen plan to her workshop wall. This is her Sophia Snore Transformer. So it's going up and up and up and it comes out. I need father's briefcase, mother, mother's gavel, some crepe paper bunting, two rolls of duct tape, grandmama's girdle, <laughs> and a spare flugelhorn from Miss Canticle. She even cut a strip from her favorite blue tutu. So, can you see that's pretty fancy blueprints? Let's see what her invention turned out to be. That night, when Noodle donned his new sleep mask, that's what she was creating, something to put over his nose. It went zroomp, zroomp. Instead, it became hush, la la, hush, la la, hush, la la, like a sweet giraffian lullaby. Does it sound like it worked? I think it worked. I think her invention worked. And best sleep ever, declared Father, pushing aside his coffee. I'm ready to seize the day, cried Mother, dumping out her tea. I'm ready to see some pork, said Uncle Conrad, chomping his bacon. Well, here's Grandmama, even Grandmama, looked better rested and renewed despite the way she crossed her arms. Can you see, she's like, 
I still don't like him, but I slept. Noodle fluzzled, then he muzzled, and then, look, can you see he's getting ready for that kiss? Crush wants. Grandmama planted the, Grandmama planted the sloppiest kiss ever on his cheek. We couldn't live without you, Noodle. After all, you are family, perdurably, perpetually, abidingly. What did those words mean? Forever. So even Grandmama was happy at the end. All right. So I have one more rhyme. And the word, our last word of the day is I meaning me, I, and I want to say, I have 10 fingers and they all belong to me. And they, I can make them do things. Would you like to see? I can shut them up tight. I can hold them out wide. I can put them together. I can make them hide. I can put them up high. I can put them down low. I can put them down low. I can fold them on my lap and hold them just so. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me for our ABC adventures. And I hope to see you again next time. Bye-bye.